Hey YouTube, this is a video about my HHO system, so let's get into it. Um, here's my HHO system, this is completed. So you can see up here is the hose with my torch. And I apologize for the bad lighting, but um, I can't film it anywhere else. So I don't know if you can see, but there's a cap. You, you can't see it at all, but there's a cap over there. And let me just unscrew it for you real fast. And this is just goes into my water reservoir in the, down in there. This is really bad lighting, I apologize. So, um, yeah. And then in here is all of these stuff. And you can see I just painted on HHO on the outside. I made this door. This is a old like tool cabinet thing I got from like a yard sale. And so I just opened that door up and it's, pretty good it stays open so but here's inside you can just see all the there's a power supply the cell water reservoirs up there you can't see it and then the bubblers up there you can't see it so let me turn on the lights in here um, there's my power supply light and everything this is probably really washed out in the video but um, hopefully you can see it pretty well so now you now you can see my reservoir my bubbler pretty clearly and then down there is my power supply and my cell, and you can just see these LED strips on the side just for lighting. And over here is my control panel for my power supply. This controls the cell. So I'm gonna get, go ahead and run it real fast and I can explain a little bit as we go. Um, that just turned on the pump. You can That's behind the cell. You can kind of see it back there. Not really, but just trust me, it's there. Um, and then there's also a drain that I can drain electrolyte when I need to. Um, so that's pretty handy when changing electrolyte out. So now I just turn on the fan to my power supply. And we can go ahead and start making some HHO. And hopefully you can actually see the production. Yeah, hopefully you can see that pretty well. I know it's really bad lighting and everything, but... Um, I'm going to go ahead and light my HHO torch and I'll just burn some wood for you just to show a demonstration. Make sure that's all the way shut. Alright, let me measure the amperage real fast just to make sure I'm not going to damage anything. Give me a second, bear with me. Um, never mind, my amp meter is uh, broken or it's out of battery, so I'm just going to trust that this isn't overdoing anything, um, but yeah, let's go ahead and light up my torch. Let me shut this door. And my, here's my cord, my tubing over here, and then my torch I made just from pretty easy parts, and this is a MIG welder, so. I'll just spark this real fast. Let me get this towel out of the way. And I don't want to run it too long. Now I'll explain it a little bit, but we have some production and there's my torch. And that looks like it's a little bit too high, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit. That's better. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so this is my HHO torch here. I don't know if you can catch that. There's the torch. And this is probably around two liters a minute, maybe actually more. I don't know exactly how many amps I'm putting through there right now, so I can't give a good estimation too well. There, that's more. Whoa, shoot. <laughs> yeah, so it's just HHO torch. Um, nothing too exciting, I guess. Yep, this thing can braze metal, it can burn wood, and it's pretty handy, and a lot of people put this in their car, so I might try that later, but not right now. Right now this is good for me, so I'm going to shut it off using this valve. You can hear that pop is just the gas in here exploding, um, or just burning, I don't know. People say it implodes and some people say it explodes. 
I personally think it explodes and then implodes, and I'll explain some other stuff in a second. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and shut this thing off with my control panel over here. And let me, I'm going to go ahead and just show a little bit more detail in this thing. I'll coil that in a little bit. Um, yeah, so here up here is my control panel, and I know you can probably not see that at all. But there's a switch and then there's a knob, and I control with the knob there. So I'm gonna shut off these lights, and maybe you can no, you can't see any better. Um, so I just turned off my pump and my fan, and let me explain some. So that was it running and everything. I'm not gonna run it anymore because I had having a problem with rust that's in the in the system, and um, I need a test. Um, so I don't want to mess it up, really. <laughs> I'll explain. All right. I don't really know, know where to start. I have a video all about this um, power supply here. If you want to watch it, if you want to replicate it, go ahead. Um, this outputs around 50, 50 amps at most. So it is actually pretty good. And it was not really expensive to build now that I fi figured everything out. It probably cost a total of like $40 for a 50 amp power, power supply. And if you do something better on yours than me, then it might even be up to 60. Uh, it just kind of depends. It's kind of... Um, so I have a video all about that. But um, then here's my cell. I believe it's, if I remember correctly, I made it 28 plates. Um, I had to get my stainless steel plates um, machined at a machine shop. And it cost me $70 to do that. It was pretty expensive for them to just cut off some edges and drill some holes because stainless steel I can't even drill it at my house it's ridiculously hard to drill so they did that for me and um, my thanks goes out to them Kawi Dish Machine and Fab so they helped me on this and then I just bought the reservoir and then the bubbler up here from eBay and that's pretty much it I got these lights off eBay they were really cheap and then this this total thing probably cost around 400 or 500 dollars it wasn't too expensive for me it was much more expensive than that because I had a lot of trial and error and I've done a lot more um, my electrolyte in this system is potassium hydroxide it is working really well for me I did passivate this cell um, in passivation you run warm a warm solution of citric acid through the cell and it removes all iron deposits on the plates and it forms a protective layer over them so they not they won't rust but what happened is when I was working on this, I think I got some iron dust from just from me working on things like this door. Some iron dust got inside my cell and contaminated the top plate. And I did not passivate after that, so my, my plate is all rusty now. And I'm pretty sure it's just the top plate so I can remove some plates and fix it. Um, and yeah, that's my cell. This is just some, um, actually this is cutting board this white material up here and it is really strong I think this is like an inch thick or something and it was pretty cheap I got both of them for $16 off of like the cutting board company or something off offline so I was really happy and they even rounded the edges for me and it's really it looks pretty professional professional the plate the plates in here were probably the most expensive the plates themselves cost like $80 and a machine them cost 70 so you can tell how that was expensive this line here comes from McMaster car um, let me explain some of the line stuff. Uh, you can see up here is my water reservoir. This is where the water goes and where the gas goes also. I'll explain. So water comes out of this bottom connection here down to my pump. It just goes past the valve for my drain and into the pump. And then it comes through the bottom of my cell down here, up through it. Um, and back into this top receiver area up here. I don't know if you can see that little black thing over there. And then that that brings water back in and it also brings HHO gas from the cell with it. And the gas just bubbles up and comes up in here. You can see, I don't know if you can see that black fitting. I had to make this above the, the metal metal top here because that's just the way that the reservoir was built. The, water, the tube comes back down into the, the machine and it comes down to my bubbler, bubbles up and goes through my flashback arrestor into my torch. I know that's pretty long, but that's all the hose in the whole thing. 
Uh, the torch is a MIG, it has a MIG tip on it. Um, this fitting that it screws into, I had to tap out with like an, I think it was like an M6 tap. Um, and then that thing just screws into there. I forgot exactly what this fitting was. Uh, f I think I forgot the YouTube channel's name and I might put it in the description if I can f remember, but he gives a good tutorial on this. And yeah, this flashback arrestor comes from eBay and I I've had like one flashback when I was experimenting um, and it prevented it. So that's all I would know about it. <laughs> so I guess that's good that it did not get past that the first time it happened. But I try not to get too many flashbacks because it's pretty dangerous. And I also have a bubbler here that will prevent it for sure. But you don't want that ha to happen. This bubbler cap can pop off. And I this video is going way too long. But um, that's about it for my system. And thank you for watching.